Hi, I'm Joshua. And I'm Raina. And September What's Neat starts now. Right now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is the What's Neat Show for September 2018. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we go to the St. Louis Railroad Prototype Modelers Meet, the RPM Meet in St. Louis this past July. And I interviewed a lot of manufacturers and model builders at that show. Plus, we see a lot of footage of a lot of great models on the table. There were just hundreds of models, and people from all over the world actually attended the show. In fact, a lot of the questions for the folks that I asked wasn't so much as you see in past shows where the manufacturers pitch us and show us all their new products. I really wanted to get down to the bottom of where their passion from trains came from. Why is it they like trains? So a lot of that came into the interviews. Now I had an hour and a half of footage that I actually recorded at the show with regards to almost 18 interviews, which turned out to be way too much material for a 45 minute show. So a lot of that material is gonna run in a future What's Neat This Week podcast during a week that we don't do a show. So that'll be a .5 special edition show when we do that. Also, another thing that happened was every evening after the show, of course, I had guests over here in my studio, bonfire, running a lot of trains, but we also did a podcast that Saturday evening where we had many manufacturers on that podcast at the very first time. So be sure to check that out. I think that was podcast number 43. And with that, let's visit and go on now with the rest of this show, the Railroad Prototype Modelers Meet in St. Louis. So I'm sitting here with Steve Hurt. Now you'll remember Steve from last year's RPM meet. He had some of the most favorite models and some of the most spectacular models that we got on video. And I'm not just saying that, the reader's feedback was amazing, Steve. That's great. So now you're back again this year and you've built this brand new model to show us. Tell yes. us about that. Uh, this is a Klein wrecker that the Katie owned. Uh, it was mainly used for like re-railing functions and that type of thing. I found a picture in the Nick Molo book that was, it's an old Emery Goulash photo. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with the truck, the, the look to it. Uh, what really drove me in was the uh, water cooler that is on the fender and I knew then I needed a model of it. So I started in uh, right after we left this show last year and just got it finished up about a month ago. So it's, uh, the, the cab is from a different resin uh, manufacturer. Everything else other than the cab and a little bit of the hood is scratch built. Uh, the, the doors, the hood, things like that are all brass so that they all function like the, the truck should have. Uh, the rest of it is styrene and styrene pieces for the chassis, uh, resin for the wheels, but yeah, all basically all scratch built truck. So. Now, Steve, you said it took 11 months for you to build this. You started on it last year. Yeah. And can we expect something like this every year? Uh, that's my goal. Every year I try to do one big project. So uh, I already have my uh, subject picked out for next year. But just to kind of challenge myself, I never start till we leave here. And then uh, that gives me a, I have to finish by date that way too. I have to start, have to finish. And yeah, so I've got, got a new project already to go. And we'll hit that as soon as I get back. You are absolutely amazing. I love all the models. I've photographed them. I've shot them various times. It's just an absolute pleasure to meet a modeler of your caliber, and I mean that with great respect, Steve. I greatly appreciate it. I, I enjoy coming out and having people people see the, uh, I don't know, kind of odd topics I like to model. So I, I'm glad people enjoy it and hopefully keep 
going that way. It's, uh, You're amazing, brother. Thank you for sharing your work absolutely. again with us. Absolutely. Thank White's you very much for having me. I always enjoy it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with John O'Donnell. And John, you've been on the What's Neat show before promoting your company Moondog where you make magnificent freight car loads. But I want to go back in time because you and I have known each other for better than 25 years. And way back when, you were an artisan in that you were quite a good painter of models, especially the brass models. And the thing that I, I want to talk about, because I'm rolling some photographs right now of a very efficient, clean shop, which I want to illustrate and stress as part of the process of model building is that efficiency. But you literally did hundreds of models. Can you want to elaborate about your artistry in that? Probably the biggest project that we took on was one winter. We did 110 DD40s for Overland and that uh, made me quite religious getting through that. So, but we painted a lot of models and I still enjoy painting today, just can't see as good and a lot of other things aren't as good. Right, and fast forward now 20 years and you are selling trees now. My wife Connie started making trees out of uh, tumbleweed for the armature and then she does all the other stuff. We just have always enjoyed this hobby. So we're always doing something different. That's absolutely amazing. They're very fine and there's a lot, no two look alike. Right. Plus you still do all the freight car loads, don't you? Correct. How has that been working out for you? I'm as busy as I want to be, I'll say that. So pretty busy working on all that. I love the pipe loads, I love all the stuff you do. And now the, how many prototype modeler meets is this for you? Probably. I think nine. Nine years. So it's always a good steady show and this is oh, pretty much your clientele? This is great. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's been fun to watch it grow because it started nothing more than a card table. It's so unreal. tell us, John, again, your Moondog. What's the website? Moondograilcars.com. Don't oh, and you know me. what? I already forgot. Yeah, let's talk about this because there's one more thing that caught my eye and that is your decals. Been doing this for about four years. Um, like these are just faded or different. I like to do a lot of different stuff as you can see. We've, uh, like this is a burn for the Top Gun cars. Oh, it's perfect. So it looks like a burn on there. And then we do graffiti. And then we also do wheel, wheel spray. Okay. That's. Oh, that's the wheel spray for wheel the spray. ends of the cars. And then this is where it's been through a, a oiler or grease. That's what all this represents down here. Wow. That's a lot so of, you're different. busy. You didn't retire, you're still busy. I don't want to retire. So, all right. John O'Donnell, thank you for being on What's Neat. Thank you, sir. One of my most favorite manufacturers from Canada is Rapido. We cover a lot of your new news on our weekly podcast that we do, the What's Neat This Week show, because you guys have always got new news. You are always releasing neat videos on YouTube. The most eccentric, I must say, is Jason. And you two gentlemen are Jason's wizards. You guys are development, product development for Rapido. Right. Yep. Introduce yourselves and tell the What's Neat viewers what we can expect. Okay. My name's Gareth Bear, Rapido Trains. I'm from the UK originally, so I design a lot of the British You're models. You're mere brothers. Oh yeah, where about are you from? Harrogate. Harrogate? Yes. Excellent, excellent, yes. And excellent. we've got? Dan Darnell. Dan Darnell, you're another yeah. wizard in design. Yes, I do a lot of the Canadian stuff. Yeah. And you've got some beautiful engines here to show off this yes, week, we and you've announced a new freight car this week. Tell us about that. That would be Garris Project, and yes. the New York Central. Yeah, the uh, New York Central FlexiFlow, the ACF 3,500 cubic foot uh, hopper. Okay. Uh, signature uh, New York Central car. Uh, lasted a long time from the 1960s right through to the uh, 2000s. Nice. So uh, everyone associates, you know, New York Central, Penn Central, Conrail, 
and uh, they, they worked all, all over the country actually believe it or not all over the continental USA that's awesome yeah and uh, Dan tell me about these beautiful locomotives you've got two of them you got the B37s over here GE B36s yeah. so, and you yeah. tell us start with this the RS11s are the American version we're also doing the Canadian RS18s there's a lot of brass on that yes yeah we've done all photo etched walkways photo etched steps it's a Bands. very, very beautiful model. So how many variations would you say there are of that? Uh, well, step wells, there's 17 different step wells on them. Uh, we can do different filter pack arrangements just by switching out the parts. Dynamics pop in and out of them. Full DC season sound and lights. This is the SP light I package. can see the value of what you do in the design because it is your design that allows these many variations to be economically possible. Exactly, exactly. Just by making it modular. Like even this filter pack could be switched into a CN. We can build anything that Elko or MLW built off of that chassis. And tell us about also these beautiful, what are they, B36-7s? B36-7s, and okay. that, the game is tell, about that. tell us about that. So the, uh, the B36-7 is a project that's been very close to my heart. Uh, I managed to convince Jason to let me make it. And uh, obviously one of the main reasons behind that was because we're trying to break more into the American market. And this gives us opportunities to make models like the Santa Fe, Southern Pacific, Conrail, CSX. And uh, again, like the RS11, every single version is basically a brand new locomotive. Uh, we have different uh, hood ends, uh, many different noses covering different light packages, things like that. Each cab is different. We have every single fuel tank is different. We have separate fuel fillers, uh, sight glasses, all the weld lines are in the correct place. If you turn one upside down, you'll see we've done full traction motor cabling. I don't think anyone's ever got close to the amount of traction motor cabling we've got on this model. I love your passion. <laughs> Thank you. You really know this. And you know not only are you guys great model builders, but you, Jason and the group of you together are very smart businessmen, relatively astute in the fact that I understand that you guys are opening up a new location over in Europe, in England or something, isn't it the UK? So, uh, yeah, so in the past we've uh, made a lot of British models, but they've always been for our clients. Right. So people come to us, they say, we want to make this, we want to make that, we make it for them. But now we want to break into the British market on a more kind of uh, on a larger scale. We want to make our own models under our own brand. We're fed up with people taking credit for the work we do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm working on our first diesel locomotive for the British, lo uh, British market at the moment, which we'll be announcing maybe early next year. But already Jason has announced uh, buses for the British market. But obviously to do this, we need to have a base in the UK. So we, we're uh, going to employ uh, somebody in the UK on a more uh, kind of permanent footing to handle that business for us and uh, so we can ship direct to the UK and uh, have basically a little mini operation over there. Boy, I'm excited and I look forward to that stuff. It's going to be great. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank the Rapido gentlemen, what an awesome company. Great interview guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So I'm sitting here with Dave Hussey and you know, he's been on the show every year at the Prototype Modelers Meet for going on almost, what, four or five years that I've been interviewing you. And you have not slowed down, man, Dave. You're wearing me out. I mean, you've got six or eight new models this year. Eight new models that I brought for the first time to this show. Wow, it's, so uh, what have we got? I see a lot of UP stuff. Tell me what's going on. Give me the breakdown. Okay, we got four UP cars that are two combo door cars, and then two cars that are were converted from one of the combo door cars, two different door variations. I've got a Great Northern uh, ACF built uh, with a nine foot sliding door car. I've done two 40 foot you know phosphate cars one for the seaboard airlines and one you know those Evans built and then uh, that was done in 1967 and 19 excuse me 66 in 1967 they ordered a, another huge batch of them from Pullman Standard and uh, they came in as uh, seaboard coastlines and then we've got a uh, you know still 
I had to even get my sample model completed, a Norfolk Western B121. That's cool. Now I see decals on the table. Do these decals come with the cars or are these additional products? They're additional products. These decals were done by Dick Harley. The artwork was done by Dick Harley for Hubert Mask. And so Hubert Mask is printing them. You know, he's selling them, I'm selling them, but they were specifically designed for these cars. We've got uh, several variations of the the lettering because you know Dick's the UP expert guy and so we've got them as delivered with the nine inch numbers and then when they were redone with the 14 inch numbers. Uh, now I'm looking at all these different cars and uh, all your different doors and this and that. Are these laser cut? Are these cast cars in resin? Tell me the makeup of the model. Well, uh, it's a combination. You know, the, the sides are all laser cut. Some of the doors are laser cut for, for the exterior post plug doors. Some of the doors are, you know, I get from Intermountain or KD, uh, depending on the car. I get, you know, if, if there's a good a door available, I'll acquire it. The roofs that come with these cars either come from Maloco or Ather Genesis, um, under frames, you know, so you end up getting the parts to build a complete body. You know, the modeler still has to do trucks and couplers and that sort of thing. You are amazing. What you do for us, the modeler, all the research, all the really cool, unusual models. You know, you're not going to have a whole train of these, but this is going to make your train. It is, yeah. So, Dave, I love it every time I get to talk to you. You are the best, brother. Let's take care, bud. All Good right. See you. Good seeing you. Thanks, Kenny. And hi, I'm Blaine Hadfield with Arrowhead Models, and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing in the RPM's showroom here in the St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet, and I'm looking at this gorgeous modular layout, and I notice Jason Quinn, a regular on the show, is running trains. <laughs> so guys, introduce yourselves and tell me about this beautiful layout. So my name is Brian Sellers. I'm one of the members here of the Ohio Valley Sipping and Switching Society. We have uh, we had our module here, or layout rather, for uh, about nine years. We started in 2008. We started building our first module three years prior, right after the Cincinnati National Model Railroad Association show in Cincinnati, where we're based out of. But uh, yeah, this is a great time here at RPM. We're very happy to be here. This is our first time attending uh, the show here in St. Louis. It's awesome, and the scenery's gorgeous. Now, Jason, tell me, have you worked on this layout too? Um, I actually, I've just run trains on it so far. I'm the newest member. I've only been in the club about a year. And uh, I actually live in Indianapolis, and the club's based out of Cincinnati, so it's kind of hard to meet up. So when I do, it's a lot of fun. Now, it's really easy to see this layout. What is your bench work height? So bench work height is uh, 48 inches all the way up to the top of the rail. And I'm really impressed with this intermodal facility, all the vehicles, the orange cranes. This looks really dynamite, guys. Well, thank you. That's actually uh, some of my handiwork. My, uh, myself, another gentleman uh, who's not with us this weekend, we constructed that as one of the founding kind of sections of the layout when we started, but uh, it's based out of the Santa Fe facility in Willow Springs, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Nice. Yeah. Now, I love how your scenery flows from module to module. You don't have a circus here and dinosaurs and a tornado. It's really neat. What what made you model it that way? Well, we really appreciate the, uh, I think, the look of the Midwest. A lot of us were Midwestern fans, whether it be the Eastern Roads or the Western. I think it was a big section that uh, we all appreciated and we got together. So, as you said, uh, we wanted to make sure that, for the most part, things flowed together as much as it could. We didn't want to have the tornadoes here and the circus here, if you will. Uh, we've gotten big enough. We've added a, a bit more topography in some of the modules that aren't with us today. But uh, for the most part, all, this, all of the uh, scenery sections, they do come together quite nicely and uh, makes for a really nice looking layout. Now, I really like your signaling system. What kind of a DCC system do you use? Yeah, so we use Digitrax for our operations. The signals themselves, they, uh, they're not linked up to the Digitrax system. It's more for looks than anything, but uh, they do look nice. But uh, it's not an actual functioning system, more for the looks. But we do use 
vintage of tracks as far as operations. It's super cool, man. Thank you guys for sharing this with the viewers of What's Neat. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your channel. Thanks for stopping by our layout, and hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to see you at a future segment or maybe here next year. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you so man. much. Appreciate it. So I'm standing here with Dan Goins from Texas, and he's brought with him the 87... 187 Vehicle Club. The 187th car guys have come to the prototype modelers meet. And the reason for that is because cars are so closely associated as a prop for our trains. Absolutely. And you've brought some beauties here. Tell me about this display. Well, one of the things that we brought um, is all of the uh, modelers that do such incredible work with just the vehicles themselves. Um, we brought uh, modules and we brought individual displays. Uh, we have trucks and heavy equipment and uh, emergency displays, um, anything to do with vehicles because early on in the model railroad industry, HO vehicles were just kind of left behind. Right. And it's only been in the last 15, 20 years that they really come around. And we have a lot of active manufacturers. Okay. Uh, we have a, a lot of vibrant uh, model builders, uh, which is kind of interesting because for a lot of the model railroad industry right now, there's more and more collectors and less and less builders. But in the vehicle side, there's still a whole lot of builders involved in them. No, that's bashing. a fact. I really dig these barges with the yeah. cranes on them. I see yeah. three of them here, and they're just that's absolutely amazing. beautiful models down to the deck rigging and the chains. Yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, vehicles aren't just cars. Yeah. They are vehicles yeah. encapsulate so many different types yeah. of machines, yeah. doesn't it? I once had uh, IMPS, which is the International Plastic Model Builders. He came to me one time and he said, you know, those model railroader guys, they aren't real modelers. Because look at what they do with their vehicles. I said, you know what? That's about to change. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you all coming to the show. I hope that we get to see you again. And after I'm done working the show, I want to come back and really sit down and look okay. at these models. Okay. But Dan, thank you thank for being you. on What's Neat. Okay. I've got George Bogatuck from Soundtracks with me here in St. Louis today. And George, I know this is so exciting. The electronic industry has changed and you guys have changed it. it. Very much so. Absolutely. And what we've done with our Tsunami 2 decoders is we've tried to give it a much more realistic experience of running a locomotive and the sounds that are going to come out of it. So for example, here with our Tsunami 2, we have 16 independent sound channels. Okay. And what that means is that this decoder is capable of playing 16 independent sounds and our sounds are not just a random playback. We, we actually have an interactive sound system that works based on how you're, you're running your locomotive. Anybody can make a random noise generator and they do. 
we want to make it that much better and so it's an interactive sound system and so when you use your brakes more frequently it triggers the compressor and so where the 16 sound channels come into play is because when the decoder is running and you hear those sounds coming in and off in the background based on how the decoder is working you don't have to have the compressor sound kick out or go away because you turn on the bell right. or whatever and we're trying to create that real illusion of what the locomotive is doing so we give you the ability to control your locomotive and run your train and let the sound system and work for you and not you know cut out or do any cause of uh, you know cause any problems or anything like that I, so, I listen to your decoders and I learn how the real train sound that way yes. rather than going out and another thing one of my most favorite things about your decoders that I really enjoyed when I run my trains is mm -hmm. that when I'm pulling a freight with tsunami 2 I know the engines chug up they rev up by yes. themselves and they rev down and it's really like the real thing it is that's what's called our dynamic digital exhaust okay and what it's doing is it's reading the load on the motor so when you have a heavier train your locomotive is going to be working hard Harder. Right. And so you can just adjust the throttle, let the locomotive run, and your terrain will dictate what the locomotive is doing. So as you're going uphill, you're going to hear it working harder. When it's going downhill, you're going to hear it working less. You also have a manual override. So let's say if you want to go around that corner and you want to increase the diesel engine RPM, you can just, by default, it's function five to increase the diesel engine RPM or six to decrease it. So never once do you lock your throttle to adjust the, the throttle knob, and then you have to remember what throttle not your what no, speed no. you were running in and you have to drop the throttle back down and ours does it automatically based on that you can set the sensitivity so a switcher can be more sensitive so you hear more drastic changes when your locomotive is moving this cut of cars in and out of the yard where a road freight may be more even tempered because you've got more locomotives together so you can sure. set that sensitivity to adjust it there's so many cool things in Man. it I could talk for an hour I just know and you've got a layout and you run these at home and you I do. do you I eat do. and sleep this because I you do. work this all the time with soundtracks. I now do. you've been working there a long time. I've, it'll be 10 years in October. Do you believe and that? It's just amazing. I can't believe it. I you are worked. part of us. You're part of the industry, and we love you, George. That's been so much fun. Goalie George. Goalie George is my, is my personal YouTube channel. And then on soundtracks, we've been doing weekly videos called Onboard with Soundtracks. And that's where you can get more in depth information on features that we've talked about today and more. And we don't just focus on the Tsunami 2. Uh, last week or week before, we did a three video series on consisting. Okay. So so I know you yes. have talked about setting all your locomotives to address three and running it. I do do that. Shh, 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 shh. I love but, it. But what we do is I, t I did a three video series talking about the different types of consisting, how to work it, and how to build it. So you can get the best out of your locomotives. So we don't just focus on the Tsunami 2, but we do obviously want to show you the benefits of the Tsunami 2. So be sure to check out, like, and subscribe to that. And also check out our Facebook Website. page because we do a lot of information on there. Oh, just you're little, doing a lot of new videos, aren't we're you? We're doing a lot, a lot of, new of videos. videos. Every week we're posting to our YouTube channel. We're getting snippets on our Facebook page. So be sure to like that. And you can link to both of those at Soundtracks.com. Soundtracks.com. George, we love you, brother. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much. Always fun to see you here. Look at these beautiful modules on this table. I'm standing with our wonderful friend, Bob Rivard. Hello, good evening. You Ken. took the trip to come to the prototype modelers meet, which tells me the last time must have been good for you. It was. And it so was. now here we are, 2018, and you brought part of your layout with you. Yes, What's I going did. on with that? Yep. Uh, last year I had such a good time coming out here with Frank, and so we did the same thing. Frank Jordan is here with me. Uh, we gave a clinic this morning and all went well and we brought some of our models. Frank is a, a Rock Island modeler so a lot of these cars over there on the, uh, that's the spine line. No, that's really cool Minnesota. how you made that set up cross that's, over there and yep. it's across the tables here. It's an exact duplicate of what exists up in uh, Minnesota. Now does this Rose work Court. into your home layout or are these additional yep. modules that you have? I, I built these things just for the show. Okay. This show, these two scenes. This scene here I built last year. I had a water problem in my basement, water damage, and I rebuilt my scene, about 20 feet of a scene, and I did it this concept. Now they use this pink foam for uh, base. It's fantastic, the methods they use now. No, you're and right. I had used particle board 40 years ago, and it warped. And right. so I had to tear it out, and I redid it with this concept, which is the spine line 
in the spine line goes under the Chicago Great Western, and okay. the Sioux line gains access to the huge Roseport refinery in Minnesota, and that's what this scene represents. So this is the Rock Island, this is the old Chicago Great Western, which the Sioux line runs their transfers on this line. Now I see you got all foam here going on on the scenery. What kind of track have you got on this diorama? It's just, um, it's just regular, like Shinohara uh, code. This might even be code 70 up here. Okay. This is just. Um, I like how you weathered your ties with I've paint got, individually. The tie concept came from Mike Confalone's videos. He's so, he's like your videos. Right. He inspires you to do stuff. And so I wanted to aid, you basically paint your ties and you weather them with aim powders and the result is weathered nice looking prototype ties. Now I see you've been doing a lot of articles for what? Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine uh, in the past two years now. I talked to you about that last year and they do such a wonderful job with my material. I am so happy with it and yeah it just came out this month my article on doing Rock Island uh, units for the Rocky Sioux transfer and I'm real happy with how it turned out. So. Now I gotta make a personal admission on foam. Yes. I know you through all of your articles for the past 20 to 30 years, Rail Model Journal, Model Railroader, you name the publication. You yes, and I have yes. been doing articles for both of them at the same period of time, yes. looking at each other's work, learning from each That's other's right. work. I've yep, learned I from agree. your trestles. It's, I'm I a foamer, it. and when I, I got it. to yes. meet you in person for real, <laughs> yep. It's one of those examples of how do you behave while well, I'm going to meet Bob Rivard. Oh but goodness. I must tell you, I do respect your work, wow. and I appreciate it every time you share it with the viewers on What's Neat. Thanks for coming, Bob. Thanks, Ken. It's awesome, Good talking brother. to you as always. So, All right. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm sitting here with Paul Ellis from Scaletrains.com, and Paul's here at the RPM meet, but you brought some beautiful models. Tell me about this. Oh yeah, yeah, Ken, we've got um, a new announcement of SD40-2s we announced this morning at the show. Um, new road names and more paint schemes for our, for our very popular SD40-2 model. I've uh, got a few examples here. Um, here's Milwaukee Road. Uh, we've done Milwaukee in the past, although this run is different from previous runs, is these particular units are equipped with um, extra antennas for low control, which is a remote control um, um, helper system that you know, Milwaukee Road and other railroads use. And you can tell that by the extra radio antenna on the cab roof. And also these units, this particular number here is unique. It's one of the units that was equipped with icicle breaker equipment. And you see that we have these added these extra chain troughs on the back and the little bracket hardware in there. That's yeah, cool that you guys can do all these individual details like that on, on models. Yeah. I saw that square, square, what's it called? Oh, uh, the CSX unit, the rebuild, is with the nickname SpongeBob Square Cab. That's it. Um, yeah, after the cartoon character, and they have the, the cab is kind of a boxy appearance. Um, the whole idea behind, behind the SD40-3, as CSX calls them, um, the SD40-2s in their fleet, a lot of them are getting, were getting pretty raggedy in, the, you know, in their later years. So CSX has embarked on a rebuilding program where they are totally refurbishing their SD40-2 fleet. They're getting a new front end, including the cab, nose, and the sub base, you know, with, the, with built an HVAC and all the new crew amenities to make them more comfortable, more crash worthy and safer for the crews. And the pre All right, here comes a CSX engine. I can't wait to see this. Look at this cab yeah. on this. I'll shoot some close up B-roll of this, but this is just amazing that you can do a unit like this with a variation of Nothing less than a brass model. This yeah. is how brass used to be 20 years ago. Yeah, very, very and now you can do this now where you've got one engine with one specific cab. Yep. Now, Paul, we love it. We love what you do. Oh, We're you. all very familiar with you through scaletrains.com and your mm -hmm. internet presence. Right. But tell me, you know what? I know you've got a passion for trains. Tell yeah. us all about where your passion comes from. Well, um, I've always been into model trains ever since I was a little kid. You know, my father and my brother both, older brother, you know, had layouts of the house. You know, when I was a little kid, you know, like uh, get the piece of four bed plywood and nail, you know, nail some, you know, some Atlas sectional track on there with the road bed and you know, run trains around. And I grew up with the Blue Box era. You know, I had a local hobby shop that I used to go to all the time. You know, get get money from doing chores around the house and buy my bike from the hobby shop, buy some Blue Box hoppers and other little things like that. And it just manifested itself. You know, I've worked in the industry for, geez, probably close to. Well, over 15, 16 years now. So, 15 years you've been in this model train hobby. What What did you do prior to scale trains? Uh, pr prior to scale trains, I was at Athern. I worked R&D at Athern for about seven years. Um, before that, I worked at Microscale Industries as doing R&D and doing graphic design for about four years there. And before that, um, I worked at local hobby shops during my college years. You know, made a little money and, and you know, and uh, you know. 
playing with trains. <laughs> wow, that's absolutely an amazing pass that you've got. It's an honor to talk to you. You are very respected in the industry, and we look forward to all the new cool stuff that you guys come out with. Yeah, oh, thank you. We appreciate that, and then, uh, you know, we appreciate all the support from our customers over the over the years we've been in existence, and uh, there's a lot of things, neat, neat stuff in the pipeline. We're anxious. We're going to be announcing a new locomotive, hopefully next month, at the Anna Marie Nationals in Kansas City. I'll see you there for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Do come by our booth. We're pretty excited about what's coming up next. So That's awesome. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for talking. So I'm standing here with Matt Gentry from Athern, and Matt, you brought some really cool new products that I haven't even seen yet. And I usually see everything first. Tell us about this Amtrak engine and these new things we got going on. So this Amtrak engine is our SDP-40F, and this is the phase two paint scheme. And uh, these are available in stores now. Um, we also have the Norfolk Southern SD60E in the uh, veterans unit, honoring our veterans, number 6920. This is our first deco sample production, uh, deco sample of this model. And um, Ken, you'll be getting that soon to get some photographs of, I'm sure. I know, I hear that coming. I think we're building a bridge for that right now. We're building something. Chris has got me busy. Yes. But this display booth looks great. I know Chris just did a, did a revamp on the booth, and the whole thing looks very professional. It came out super nice. But you know what, Matt? There's something else I want to talk to you about. I know, and we've talked a little bit when you were on the podcast one time, but you kind of have a passion for trains, too. You really have an interest for the models. We're both lucky we get to work in the industry we love. Right. But tell us about you and your passion. Where did well, that come from? Well, my passion started um, as long as I can remember. I mean, I it had to be at least five years old, probably before that. Um, my dad, of course, uh, was in model trains, and so I naturally got that. But I started with O-Gage, Lionel 3 Rail. Wow. And uh, I cut my teeth on a layout down in Madisonville, Kentucky. It was a 70 foot by 30 foot basement, nothing but Lionel trains. Wow, that sounds like Going through the walls, like heaven. everything. How about that? And that's where I got started. And so fast forward, you know, graduate college and everything like that. And well, I still want to collect trains and O gauge isn't cheap. Right. So I moved to HO scale um, and got lucky. Uh, Found out Athern was looking for graphic artist position. Which applied is what you for had, that. You yes. had that specialty. Yes, my background is in graphic arts. Um, applied for that and uh, moved to California. <laughs> so you would say to somebody out there that's young, say 14, 15, 18 years old, going to college, and they enjoy the hobby, that there's room in the hobby for them professionally. Anything. This hobby, uh, like I said, I started with graphic arts. There's engineering, drawings, CAD. There is electronics, electrical. Um, I mean, we work very closely with soundtracks, all the stuff that their electronics engineers do to do all these sounds. Um, just working with your hands, doing all this sort of trade type stuff is excellent. I mean, there is an aspect I learn about every day in this hobby that's like, I didn't know you needed that skill. Right, that's amazing. <laughs> and, and like you and I, I mean, you and I started our early careers in hardware stores. No, that's right. That's right. We both did work at a yep. hardware store. My first job was Ace that. Hardware there in Newburgh, Indiana. Yep. And uh, you learn so much at the hardware store, you know, plumbing, electrical, painting, all that sort of stuff. Right. I mean, you could if, order our own hummus soap, our own plywood, our own one by fours. Yep. I know, I know. And, we... <laughs> and if you can learn any of that stuff, you will learn something for this hobby. That is so fun. That is the magic of the hobby. The people you meet, the careers, the jobs that are out there, and you're, you're absolute proof that you can have a perfect job that you enjoy in the industry you like. Right. None of us are all going to get rich, but we're all going to eat well and have a good life. I never dreamed I'd be working in this industry. And You're here awesome, I am. man. Thank you very much. <laughs> you bet. Thanks, You're Ken. the best. Thanks.
So I'm sitting here with Samuel Dennehy from North Carolina, and Samuel, you build some automobiles, and you're with this, uh, what is it called, 187th Group? 187 Vehicles Club. Okay, and you guys have got a pretty big internet presence and a big group of guys that likes automobiles. Yes. And you see a lot of industrial equipment here on the table and cranes, but you're more of the custom shop, 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 shop kind yes. of a guy, aren't you? Exactly that, Tell yes. me about your artistry in cars. So I come from the 125th scale model uh, world where it's everything from hot rods, customs, stock vehicles, anything and everything. And I came over to this scale, it's 187 scale, it's HO train scale uh, vehicles, and nobody was making hot rods, customs, and low riders. So I said, there it is. That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna master it. I'm gonna hopefully be the best at it and we'll see what happens and right now I'm the only one doing it so, so you're I pretty much you're did getting what good I said. feedback this weekend are you oh wonderful feedback I built a HO scale Ecto-1 from the Ghostbusters movie and I have it lit up and it's the only one right now in the public that is lit up and people are going nuts over it. No, that's so a beautiful model. And you used LEDs in that, did you? Yes, yes, okay. it's LEDs and there's a circuit board underneath it. It's, it's ready to go. I am so impressed with your models and quite honestly, I love your persona. Your character's cool too. So you Thank fit you. the part of the custom job shop. Yes. I can imagine yes. you sitting at home working in your shop and just enjoying this hobby. I love this hobby. It's, it's not time consuming because they are so small, but at the same time, the little bit that you can put into it, it makes such a big difference. So it's, it's wonderful. Have you met Michael Buddy? I have, and we have become great friends. He's a good car yes. guy. Yes. Now right. let me ask you now, how many hours, I've seen you soaking in everything in this room, are you tempted to model anything railroad oriented? If I do, it'll definitely be car themed as well. So maybe like a, a Dukes of Hazard car jumping over an open <laughs> rail car of <laughs> some kind. Perfect. But railroading in itself, now, nah. it'll be the second afterthought that I do if I do it at all. Cool. Sam, I appreciate y'all being here and you. sharing your beautiful work on What's Neat. Your paintwork is absolutely exquisite. And stay tuned on What's Neat to see in the future whether Sam gets to the trains. Thank you. All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or order online at mycaboose.com.